What's it like being here today and seeing all the old faces? Well, it's great. It's unreal. I mean, to see people uh, today that you haven't seen for 50 years, it's unreal. Now, I have to look twice at a lot of the faces and they're looking at me. Are you this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's lovely. It's great. It was a lovely atmosphere walking in and people kind of doing that and realising who was standing in front of them. And they're like, oh, that's so-and-so. Because we all look so different now today. <laughs> Would you have kept in contact with many of the people from no. that time? No. No, I haven't. Linda was the only one uh, that I was in contact with. Not now all the time, but just when this was coming up, Linda I was in contact with all the time. And what's your memory of that first game? Uh, the 73 game, what I remember, I think it was a very wet day and we were losing at half time. And then we went out and we played a great second half and we won. Uh, we just played a great game and we knew that they were expecting to beat us. Uh, because they had trophies, they had nice trophies for the winners, which they thought was going to be the Welsh team, but we won. <laughs> but I think they still kept the good uh, trophies themselves. But anyway, no, that's the memory I have it. There was nice people, nice few people at the team at the match. The match that really stands out in my mind is the 1973 um, playing France in France. And why does that one in particular stick out? The massive stadium you played in. It was seven and a half thousand people at the game. Uh, uh, the French team were professionals, like we were just chancing our arm. But anyway, they were professionals and uh, being interviewed before the match by the referee and the television cameras there. And there was seven and a half thousand at the match. And it was just uh, the atmosphere was so surreal, like, you know. And did you realise going into that game that it was going to be as surreal as it was? Because I assume you'd never probably played in front of a crowd that big before. The most I played against, I'd say there might be 20 people at a match. And uh, no, I didn't believe. I mean, you were in shock, really, going out onto the pitch. And then you were playing against a professional team. And sure, sometimes they were flying by as we didn't know what. <laughs> will I tackle her or will I just keep her, let her keep running? I don't know. But they were. The goalkeeper was just unreal. They, their goalkeeper. Ours tried their best, but we didn't have the. We weren't the same. We weren't the same standard at all as as the the French team because they were getting the coach and they were professionals. But uh, that's all I remember going up on the train to Dublin because uh, for training. Now it wasn't training. I think we went up for three three trials and then you were picked and the next thing is you were playing against <laughs> Wales. So just if you were, looked all right on the pitch, you got the. And I think I got the captain's job is because I had the biggest mouth on the pitch. So they probably said, this one will be good as a captain. <laughs> and looking back on it now, though, like you say, you obviously had the leadership qualities that you led out that first ever team. You know, how, where does that rank, I suppose, in your life in terms of achievements? Uh, well, it ranks up there anyway. I mean, to represent your country, that ranks up there. Uh, but I played Camogie for Galway for 20 years. We won two All Ireland's. That ranks up there as well with it. Um, I ran for Galway City Harriers. I've won a few cross country All Ireland medals. You know, but I'd say wearing your Irish jersey, that's the main thing, like to represent your country. Nothing can top that. A woman of very many talents, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> and like some My of. My daughter won't agree with you there. No? <laughs> <laughs> she looks happy. <laughs> Um, some of the other girls were saying, like, you know, training sessions weren't massively regular at the time. Some of the squad hadn't even trained together before the Welsh game. What was it like being in that system? Because it must have, like, a sense of camaraderie must have come out of it oh, in it some did, way. It did. Well, you see, we didn't take any notice because we didn't train anyway. I played uh, with a team that we put into the Cloud Festival, Happy Wanderers. And the next thing is somebody said, will you come up to Dublin for trials? And I said, are they joking? But anyway, uh, no, there was no training whatsoever. Like uh, nutrition, we were looking to have some nutrition at home, don't mind, for the team. But we were a great bunch. We knitted together and we played for each other. And that's what made the team the way it was. And uh, just a very close-knit team. And we played for each other and that was it. Do you think you guys realised the significance of what you were doing at the time? And like we're here 50 years later in a lovely hotel about to embark on our first ever World Cup. Yeah. You know, the girls are professional, they have equal pay. It's, it's such a different situation, but we never would be here without you guys taking those first steps. Yeah, I suppose we didn't look at it that way at all. Not, uh, not an idea. We went out to play this other team and beat them. As for being the first 
Irish team. No, that never entered my head. But it's such a lovely thing to do now to look back and say, yeah, that's we did do, we did achieve something. But at the time, no, that wasn't relevant at all. Uh, all I was worrying about was getting the money to get up on the train. I wasn't thinking of who we were going to be playing. Training, you just trained yourself. You know, you were fit. It was kind of a natural fitness you had, and uh, it wasn't from any training we got from anybody. Like, and the FAI, we weren't recognised at the time by the FAI, but. Um, no, we didn't. I don't know that anyone look at it. I don't think so. We did not look at it that way. We were just so happy to get the Irish jersey on and get out and play. But as for we were the first team or achieving anything, no, we didn't. Well, I didn't look at it that way. But now I'm so happy and thrilled that at this stage of my life, yeah, I was on the first Irish team. So it is great. And to set a scene for you, it's the night before the team fly out to Australia for that first World Cup. The whole squad is gathered. There's the excitement. There's the nerves. The team has finally been picked, so anyone who's there knows they've made it on that plane. What would be your parting words to them as they get on the plane to go off to represent Ireland? Well, I'd say, girls, you have an Irish jersey on your back. Be proud of it. You go out there, and it doesn't matter you win or lose, we'll be proud of you. Just remember you're representing your country and keep that in mind all the time and you'll, do, you'll go places. Um, so you are the one of the few people I've seen today actually walking around with some memorabilia and I heard the jerseys got whipped off you but you managed to sneak one away. <laughs> well, um, we're here like, you know, celebrating the, the team that travelled over to Wales and I was on the panel. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed off from work. Right, but I went on then to play uh, two more internationals, and yeah, I think I'm the only one that's kept that still has the Irish international jersey from 1973, and I also have the pennant. But it was very hard to get off from work, you know, we, we weren't allowed off from work to go, so I missed the, the match in Wales. But I did play against Northern Ireland, and then we went to Paris, we went to France, and we played the French, we played against France in Parc de France. And that was a huge thrill because uh, you're coming out onto a stadium like that where they play the rugby now, you know, and coming out and uh, to have, like normally you'd have a camera, just someone taking a photograph of you, but you had the cameras up in your face. They filmed the whole, the whole match. And it was just an amazing experience. I was only 17. We were all very, very young and uh, we were never out of Ireland before. And, you know, to, to get to, to Paris and get to France and uh, because the year before, the year before 72, three of us from Kilkenny were selected to go on the Jays team from Dublin and we went on Tour of France, but that wasn't an international, but that was a Jays team and we were three players from Kilkenny that went and played with Jays and did a Tour of France. We played four matches, one up near the Belgian border and then it was after that then the French team came in 1973 to Ireland and that's when we played against them and then we went back to France again. So if you can make sense of all that. <laughs> well, that's an incredible opportunity at like that time for someone, for like a team to go and actually do a tour, a, a club team as well, not even an international team. Yeah, and uh, Jay's like were from Dublin and um, we were three players from Kilkenny and we, pl we were playing in a, a, a match in Dublin, uh, a cup match. And after the match, uh, we were told that there was a scout looking for us. So we roared laughing, like, you know, we hadn't a clue. And so this guy came down, introduced himself, and he said that he was bring, taking the team, a club team, to Jays, to uh, France on tour, and he would like the three of us to play. So that was our very first experience of travelling away. And then, like I said, the internationals followed then after that. And do you remember what it felt like for you at that time pulling on that Irish jersey, especially in that France game where there was like seven and a half thousand people there, I think, in the stadium? In the stadium, uh, actually, I brought home one of the French newspapers. I kept every single piece of memorabilia and uh, I brought home one of the French newspapers and they quoted 10,000 people, 10,000 people, because we were on after there was an under 21 match, a men's game, Italy versus France. And we were on before them. And I remember coming out of the tunnel because you had the cameras in your face as well. And I remember that and coming out and the place erupted, like, you know, and we were used to playing 50 people at a game. You know, the biggest crowd we ever had was probably 500, but this was 10,000 people. And I mean, I know in part of France, 
that number would be lost because I think it holds 60 or 70,000. But to us, that was absolute. And the whole, that whole trip was just incredible. But to wear the Irish jersey is an absolute honour. And for us to be recognised now, 50 years on, we're being recognised. We never got our caps. There was no such thing as caps. We, I was told after the French trip that to get, in order to get a cap, you'd have to have a maid and it was going to cost me £40. Now, we weren't even getting £40 for uh, wages in six months, so there was no way we could afford it. So now we're going to be getting, our, we're getting a special 50th anniversary cap, which, you know, 50 years on, is, is, uh, it's recognition by the FAI, which we really appreciate. And going back then, we didn't have an association. There was no association back in the 70s. And then they did form one, the Irish Women's uh, Soccer Association. So back then, you can't say, like, you know, you couldn't say, oh, we weren't recognised, because there was no formal group, if you know what I'm saying. But now, yes, it's great to be coming up. And, I mean, we're going in, in here, I don't... We should all have name badges, because I don't know who's who. And I have the programme, the Welsh programme there with me as well, you know. And it's just... It's just incredible to be here and absolutely thrilled and, and for, for women's sport in particular, for, for, for young girls up and coming. Where I come from in Kilkenny, there's two young girls out of the one family that put on the Irish jersey as well and I'm doing an interview now with them. Uh, in two weeks time we're working on a documentary and uh, for me, from my era and for them, to see their Irish jerseys and they haven't seen this one yet, but to go back and, and see what was back then and that, see how the Irish team have come on and the so, whole association, uh, it's a credit to them because now it's all, you know, it's, it's almost at equal power now, you know, equal power, men's and women's. And it's brilliant to have it come up, see that now. It's very, very, and to see the Irish team, absolutely. We were up at the Georgia match now in Tallaght, but the Georgia match was a non-event because 11 nil. you know what I'm saying? It was record-breaking yeah, for, rec uh, uh, for all the wrong reasons. And then we went back up to the next game and uh, so hopefully, I'd love to get, I met Vera Pau in the airport and uh, she didn't, uh, you wouldn't expect Vera, I was going to Scotland there about three weeks ago and uh, I just stopped her and I asked could I have a photograph with her and she says to me who have I? And I said, well, Kay Brennan, but I said I was Kathleen Ramsbottom back then. I said I played on the 73 team. She went like this, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And she took out her phone and she actually rang her husband in Sweden. And she said, look who I have here. She got like, all excited. I'm standing there. And she got all excited and took out the phone. And she sh I had to speak to her husband. And then she said to me, why didn't we ever, why haven't we ever met any of you players? And I said, I don't really know, but hopefully now we will. I met her that day and I was delighted to talk to her and a uh, few photographs, which means a lot because uh, we just want to wish this Irish team, hopefully they will do really well in this World Cup. Would you still keep in contact with a lot of the members of this squad? I would, um, uh, Linda more so of the squad, but from the players that we played with, 50 years ago when we started, 52 years ago, I would be in touch with them. You know, there's uh, a group of us that stay together. We meet up every few months and uh, we played for the Suffragettes. So, yeah, yeah. And I find the friends you make at the football, you keep, whether you played with them or against them, um, they're still, you know, lifelong friends. And um, can you remember where you were, or how you felt when you were told that this team was going to exist and that you were going to get to be like the first women to pull on an Irish jersey and represent the country? Um, well, we, our manager would have been informed, John Dorden, that we were, myself and Carol, were picked to, to play on the Irish team. And we just arrived and played on the match, you know. So it was later on then, it would have been more eagle training, you know, over a period of time. But for the first one, I don't think we even went training. I think we just rocked up, played on the day. <laughs> That's mad. And would you have known many of the other girls from, I presume, from like around the league that you were playing in? You probably would have known, but there was people from across the country. We would have known, yes, we would have known them. They would have been from all over the country, but we would have known most of them. You know, would have played against most of them, you know, in the league and in the cups and whatever, yeah. And did you know much about women's international football in general at the time, or was it more localised to Ireland and the teams that were there? It was more localised to Ireland. You know, it was mostly the leagues that we played in that would be more the focus rather than the international team was just only beginning. So it was a new, it was a new concept for everybody.
And over the years of playing with the team and knowing that you were kind of the first ones to pull on the jersey, obviously it wasn't always easy because women's football at the time isn't close to what it is now. For you, what was the thing that always kept you going? I know you talked about the, fo- the friendships you made through football. I think we were just glad to play football. We just loved playing football. It didn't matter that we didn't have nets. It didn't matter that the pitches were marked. We were just so glad to play, regardless whether we were playing on the street playing in our, our, for our team or the international uh, team we just loved I think you know playing football that was it do you have a particular memory with the Irish team that kind of sticks out in your head as one of your favorites um, I think we we played France in Tolka Park and we drew nil all and I think on, on that day it was with a good crowd and not like, nothing like the crowds they have now but we had good crowd family in the sands and all and we drew nil all and I think that day we were actually we were actually the better team and I, we were just a bit unlucky not to come away with a win. And what do you hope for this entire squad? Well, I hope that they, they enjoy it first, you know, not let it go over the head. <coughs> enjoy the matches, which is hard to do when you're actually playing. It's only when you look back, enjoy the matches and enjoy the success because I think it was hard come by, you know, for all the effort that they put in. So I think, you know, they just enjoy it and hopefully they do really well, which I'm sure they will when they go to Australia.